everyone, this is the Elegoo Orange Storm Giga. It's an absolutely enormous 3D printer and I've printed some stupidly large things on it. However, after working with this 3D printer over the past handful of months, there are some modifications that I'd like to make to the machine and that's exactly what we're gonna be focusing on in today's video. There are gonna be some things that we're gonna 3D print, there are some things that we're gonna have to buy and we're gonna mash those together to further enhance this huge 3D printer. And this first mod is definitely the most expensive, so let's get this out of the way. It's a large individual build plate by Troxy. This is actually an 800 by 800 millimeter build plate, which is slightly smaller than the actual build volume of the Giga with its four individual build plates. But is this completely necessary? No, probably not, but I figured I'd test it out for you all and see how well this works. These also apparently come with these huge magnetic strips. I'll definitely be holding onto these and using them for something else. Let's take these other build plates off. <laughs> this is huge, it's so big. Lining that up was certainly a challenge, but you'll see there, there's actually, I, I centered it here on this far corner here where it's typically starting your print in that corner and doing like a little purge line in the front. So we've got a little buffer there on the side or a little excess and then on the back there as well. I'm for sure ending up losing about one inch from the one side and the back of the print volume here. Now to test out this massive build plate, I figured let's test out one of our first printable mods, which is actually a tray for the other build plates and the leveling plates that come with the Neptune 4 Max. And all I ended up doing was just slightly adjusting the Z offset for the print head here to account for this new build plate. And everything looks like it just turned out perfectly here. And let's get that off. Ta-da! That worked so well. So well. And originally I designed that build plate holder here for these leveling plates because I just have them typically sitting on the side of the printer here and I'm nervous over time it's gonna end up warping these if I don't have them laying flat somewhere. So I went into Shaper 3D on my iPad to model this out based on the overall shape of those plates. And fingers crossed my measurements were all correct for this. So let's take our build plates here. These are the test measuring plates that you get to level the build plate and they should allow us to just slide those perfectly in there. And now that we're also using that larger single build plate, I can use this to also store the other four individual build plates here. And if I ever wanted to swap back out to them, I'd just be able to pull them out of this little drawer system here where I'm gonna be able to slide this directly under the Giga and keep it out of sight. Now, if you've seen any of my previous Giga videos, you'll probably have noticed that I've been using a Waze camera mounted on some kind of surface there to monitor my prints remotely. Now, if you wanna do the same thing, it's a really easy way to get a cheap camera and have it monitor your prints. However, I wanted something a little bit more elegant than this. So again, I jumped back on my iPad and designed a mountable bracket that can be placed on almost any of the rails of the Giga. So here's the printed mount for the Waze camera and it actually works really well. You should be able to just slide it directly into the slot here and then you can basically snap it on to any of the points here on the printer like so. So it just snaps into place. The problem that I quickly realized with this design here is that the print head <laughs> It, it's uh, it's knocking into it here. So uh, I need to adjust this model. That's the beauty of 3D printing. So I made a quick revision to the file. You'll see here that one side is really thin, one side is thicker. This is just a test print to see how well this works. So it still snaps into place like this, but now the print head no longer hits it. So should be good to go. I'm gonna print up the full thing. I can now also move this out of the way. <laughs> Now again, you can pretty much mount these wherever you'd like, either on the top frame, on the back frame, the sides there, or I'm gonna put it directly on the gantry. So I'll have a direct eye on it as it's printing and moving up. So let's snap that on. And then we can slide this. It's hard to do one-handed. 
So now I have my camera mounted on the printer and I don't have to worry about the print head ever coming in contact with it here. It has more than enough clearance before bumping up against the Waze camera. Now I've got a ton of lighting here in my studio, but one aspect of the Giga that I was having a hard time with was just not having enough lighting directly on the bed because there's no lights along the top. So I figured I'd add some by just using some really simple LED light bars that you can power via USB directly from the printer and then here I can power those on to add a little bit more extra light to this machine and you'll see here I've got them around the outer perimeter of the actual Giga. Now one thing I do need to do is work on some cable management here. I'm sure there's a better way that I could do this but I wanted to keep this as simple as possible for this so these light bars are just held on here by zip ties. Now to help further clean this up to make it even cleaner I might go back in and try to 3D model some T-slot brackets here for the underside that will actually clip into place into the frame of the printer. But for 20 to 30 bucks this is a really easy mod that anybody can just add on to their Giga to add some extra lighting to it. And before we get started with the next mod, I want to say a big thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. They're the makers of the Orange Storm Giga, but they also make the Neptune lineup of 3D printers, which I ended up using for all the different 3D printable mods for this video. Now, Elgu's also partnered up with all 3 p and is doing a 3D modeling summer design contest that's running right now. Think fun summer 3D printing ideas like this one here from Nico Industries, which is a lightsaber that utilizes a pool noodle. If you're interested in more information about this design contest, you'll find links to that down below. And the last mod that we're gonna be taking a look at is hopefully gonna address one of the challenges that I've had and I know others have like Frankly Built, which is where the filament is placed directly in the back of the printer and it would be better suited to have it somewhere in the middle or even closer to up front. But specifically having it somewhere in the middle is gonna help reduce some of the tension that we've seen on larger 3D prints like Frankly Built was showing in some of his videos where there's just too much strain being put on the filament and its angle as you're printing really tall objects. Objects. So I ended up going to Lowe's and looking for some piping and found a PVC pipe that might be the perfect fit for this. This is a five foot by one and a quarter PVC pipe that we're going to be able to use that should fit perfectly for this project here. And it's going to end up being about a foot too long. This is about 48 inches width wise across the actual length of the Giga. But what I figure we can do is again, 3D model some brackets here to help support this pipe. And then I can just trim off any of the excess. And the best part is this PVC pipe should actually support most size spools of filament and allow us to just slide those on there and have it positioned directly over the center of the printer. And since this needs to be snapped onto the frame of the printer, I can just use that same design that I used previously for the Wise camera. And I ended up just cutting off the top and extending the top up to include a circular opening there for the pipe. And what we ended up with here is two different print options that you can work with. One that's gonna be capped off to prevent the pipe from going fully all the way through. And then one that's completely open, depending on how you wanna actually work with it. But what's really nice about the design is that I can take the pipe and then I can just snap it into place. The other challenge that we're gonna run into with this is actually the wiring that's controlling the runout sensor there. So there are actually multiple cables because eventually this can support multiple print heads. However, this is really only gonna be dealing just with the single print head that I'm working with right now. And this cable over here is the longest. And I'm hoping once I route it back this way, it'll be enough for me to run it from back in this corner all the way over here into the center and then somewhere over here over the center of the print. Everything's just held in place by these little channel holder things. So once you remove those, now we should be able to take the longest cable and run it on the side here and then out through that pipe and into the center of the printer. So in order to cut this, I measured out to about 47 and a half inches and then marked it with a Sharpie. And now you can basically just cut it off with whatever you got on hand. I'm gonna be using this Sawzall. This piece here, and I'm gonna put in another bracket on the other side, take our pipe and Snap that in. 
I then used a drill bit to add a few holes to feed the wire through, and then it was just a matter of fishing the wire through the pipe so that I could get it out near the center of the print volume. Now I also need to move the actual runout sensor itself. So I'm gonna unscrew this here. And then here's another part that I 3D modeled and printed that's gonna allow me to take the sensor and then mount it directly to this ring that I should be able to slide directly onto the pipe. All right, I just realized a flaw in my design here. <laughs> now that I've got the runout sensor feeding through the pipe, I'm not able to actually slide anything on this uh, with it in place. So now I'm at a kind of a loss of trying to figure out how to actually get this on there. And it's, and it's not just the runout sensor that's gonna be the issue. I, any roll that you wanna end up putting on there also won't be able to feed directly on here. So th that's gonna be... <laughs> I can't believe I didn't think of that. I can't believe I didn't think of that. But you'll see here how it's going in from the side and you still need access to that full pole to be able to slide the filament directly on there. All right, so I feel a little defeated with this one because I feel like I'm so close, but it's still not quite right. Like this, it's too loose on the sides here. Like it's not just gripping enough. So I need to adjust this file. So it's a little bit tighter along the top here. Uh, I'm liking the idea of the pipe. I did realize that I could just take the wiring, the runout sensor wire and still keep it in the back here. Just disconnect it slightly and run it across the open top area. I also need to extend the pipe up vertically even higher because now that I've got this in place and sitting here, I'm seeing that this roll of filament is hanging hanging below the top of the printer, which is inside the build volume of the machine. So if you're printing something really tall, you're potentially gonna knock into something here. Also, my ring idea for the runout sensor, I think works decently. However, it's just not designed properly here where it's gonna be at the wrong angle, where it's gonna end up snagging on the filament. It needs to be positioned in a way that it's hanging below the spool or in front of it somehow. So I need to re-angle and design that. But this is again where I wanted to open it up to you all and figure out uh, what suggestions do you have for a top mounted design here to better incorporate spools? I do like this idea. This decent size pipe seems really rigid. I should be able to put multiple spools on here even. And if you have some of the three kilogram rolls or even larger, they should potentially fit directly up here as well. So not entirely perfect, but again, this was just a really fun project for me to dive into and hone in a little bit more on my 3D modeling skills. Hopefully this will give you guys some inspiration as well on some mods that you can make for your own 3D printers. And if you're anticipating getting the Giga, there's definitely some things once you get your hands on it and start working with it that you might think of. I'll definitely be sharing all the files that I've created here online. They'll be linked below. So if you end up getting this machine for yourself, you can print them and try them out and see how they work. For you. I just wanted to say thanks so much for watching. I want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. If you're interested in things like my 3D printer settings, you can find those over in my Patreon. And let me know what you think about some of these mods. And again, if you have ideas for that top mounted spool holder, let me know because I still want to try and figure out a way to actually achieve that to help out basically everybody that's working with this so that you're not going all the way to the back or getting your filament snagged as you're printing really tall things. Hey, thanks so much for watching all and I'll see you next time.